Lazarus by Sylvia Plath. About the author. Sylvia Plath was an American poet, novelist, and short story writer who is known for her powerful and confessional style of writing. Her life and work have had a significant impact on modern literature, particularly in the realm of poetry. Plath's work is marked by themes such as death, identity, mental illness, and the struggles of being a woman in a patriarchal society. Plath's writing includes poetry, a novel, The Bell Jar, and short stories. Her work often delves into her personal struggles, including her experiences with mental illness and her challenges with relationships and motherhood. Her poetry collections include The Colossus and Other Poems and Ariel, which is considered one of her most important works. Sylvia Plath is regarded as one of the most significant poets of the 20th century. Her writing is noted for its emotional intensity, vivid imagery, and confessional style. Her work has had a profound influence on feminist literature and has inspired many writers, particularly women, to explore themes of mental health, identity, and autonomy. Plath's life and work continue to be studied and discussed, and her poetry remains relevant for its exploration of personal and universal themes. Sylvia Plath's contributions to literature have left a lasting impact, and her work continues to resonate with readers for its raw emotional depth and powerful exploration of the human condition. Significance of the title The title, Lady Lazarus, holds significant meaning and encapsulates key themes of Sylvia Plath's poem. It alludes to the biblical story of Lazarus, who was raised from the dead by Jesus. The story is one of resurrection, defying the finality of death, and Plath uses this allusion to explore her own complex relationship with life, death, and rebirth. The biblical story of Lazarus is about literal resurrection from the dead. By calling herself, Lady Lazarus, Plath's speaker presents herself as a female counterpart to the biblical figure, suggesting a narrative of repeated deaths and rebirths. The title implies a sense of defiance against death, as the speaker rises again and again from her experiences, similar to Lazarus's resurrection. The use of Lady emphasizes the female aspect of the speaker's identity. This personalizes the story and distinguishes it from the male biblical figure. The poem explores themes related to women's experiences, particularly in how the speaker is viewed and judged by others, and how she grapples with her identity and self-worth. The title suggests a sense of drama and spectacle, framing the speaker's experiences as a kind of performance, similar to how Lazarus's resurrection was seen as a miraculous event. Plath uses this theatricality to explore the speaker's relationship with her audience and the commodification of her pain and suffering. The title sets up an expectation of a miraculous and triumphant resurrection, yet the poem subverts this with its dark, sardonic, and disturbing portrayal of the speaker's experiences. The title's irony lies in the fact that the speaker's rebirth is not necessarily a cause for celebration, as it is marked by a sense of anger, resentment, and defiance. The title and the poem as a whole suggest a complex relationship between self-destruction and artistic expression. The speaker uses her repeated deaths and resurrections as a form of control over her own narrative and as a statement of defiance against those who seek to exploit her suffering. Overall, the title, Lady Lazarus, 
is a powerful introduction to the poem's exploration of life, death, identity, and the tension between spectacle and suffering. It highlights the speaker's complex, multifaceted character and sets the stage for Plath's intense and haunting portrayal of her experiences. Summary of the poem, Lady Lazarus. Lady Lazarus, by Sylvia Plath is a haunting and intense poem that explores themes of death, resurrection, and the commodification of suffering. The poem is structured intersets, stanzas of three lines, and is written in the first person from the perspective of a speaker who compares herself to the biblical figure Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. The speaker sees herself as experiencing repeated cycles of death and rebirth, which she presents as performances for an audience. The poem is divided into 28 tersets which follow the speaker's journey through repeated experiences of metaphorical death and resurrection. Throughout the poem, the speaker navigates her complex relationship with death, her own identity, and the audience that watches her. Stanzas 1-3. The speaker introduces herself as a figure who has experienced death and resurrection multiple times. She references her age as 30 and hints at previous attempts at self-destruction, the first time it happened I was 10. She establishes her defiant attitude toward death and her own ability to rise again. Stanzas 4-7. The speaker describes herself as a spectacle, calling her body a peanut-crunching crowd. This imagery implies that her suffering and death have become a form of entertainment for others. She explains that she resurrects herself every decade, emphasizing the cycle of death and rebirth she endures. Stanzas 8-11. The speaker begins to detail her experiences with death, using striking and disturbing imagery. She describes herself as a walking miracle, and likens her experiences to being burned alive. She continues to assert her control over her own narrative, noting that she can choose to return from death. Stanzas 12-14. The speaker's defiance and resentment toward her audience become more pronounced. She refers to her body as a strip tease, and her experiences as a spectacle. She mocks those who exploit and consume her suffering. Stanzas 15 to 17. The speaker describes the process of her resurrection and the physical and emotional toll it takes on her. She uses vivid language to convey the pain and horror of her experiences, while maintaining a tone of dark humor and irony. Stanzas 18 to 20. The speaker asserts her agency and control over her own life and death. She likens herself to a phoenix rising from the ashes, emphasizing her ability to rise stronger each time she is reborn. She also criticizes those who benefit from her suffering, such as doctors and the audience. Stanzas 21 to 24. The speaker continues to assert her defiance and resilience. She describes herself as a commodity, pure gold, and criticizes those who seek to exploit her suffering for their own gain. Her tone becomes increasingly confrontational and sarcastic. Stanzas 25 to 28. The speaker continues to assert her defiance and resilience. She describes herself as a commodity, pure gold, and criticizes those who seek to exploit her suffering for their own gain. Her tone becomes increasingly confrontational and sarcastic. Lady Lazarus, is a powerful poem that uses vivid imagery, dark humor, and striking language to explore themes of death, 
rebirth, and the commodification of suffering. The speaker's defiance and resilience in the face of death and exploitation create a haunting and memorable portrayal of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the expectations of those around her. Critical analysis of the poem, Lady Lazarus. Lady Lazarus, is one of Sylvia Plath's most renowned and complex poems. It was written in 1962 and is included in her collection Ariel. The poem is an intense, disturbing, and darkly sardonic exploration of themes such as identity, death, rebirth, and the relationship between the self and the audience. Plath's use of vivid imagery Bold symbolism, and striking language creates a haunting portrait of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the spectacle of her suffering. The poem is divided into 28 stanzas, each with three lines, known as tercets. The tercet form provides a tight, controlled structure, which contrasts with the chaotic and disturbing content of the poem. The rhyme scheme is loose and shifting, reflecting the speaker's fragmented and unstable state of mind. The title, Lady Lazarus, alludes to the biblical story of Lazarus, who was resurrected from the dead by Jesus. In this context, the speaker in the poem is likening herself to Lazarus, having experienced repeated metaphorical deaths and resurrections. However, the title also introduces the idea of a female identity, suggesting that the poem will focus on the personal and subjective experiences of a woman. The central theme of the poem is the speaker's repeated confrontations with death and her subsequent resurrections. The speaker presents her own experience as a series of theatrical performances, each time emerging stronger and more defiant. This cycle of death and rebirth echoes the biblical story of Lazarus, but with a modern, existential twist. The speaker's identity is deeply entwined with her experiences of death and rebirth. She views herself as a kind of living spectacle, performing her suffering for an audience. The poem explores the notion of self-destruction as a form of artistic expression and control over one's own narrative. The speaker's relationship with her audience is one of confrontation and defiance. She refers to herself as a pure gold baby, suggesting that her suffering is valuable and marketable. The imagery of the speaker as a freak show exhibit underscores the commodification of her pain. The poem is infused with a sense of anger and resentment toward those who exploit and judge the speaker's suffering. She mocks her audience's fascination with her death, referring to them as peanut-crunching crowd, and accusing them of wanting a piece of her. This resentment speaks to the speaker's struggle for autonomy and control. Plath's use of vivid, striking imagery creates a visceral impact on the reader. The speaker describes herself as a walking miracle, and compares her experiences to being burned alive. The imagery of the phoenix rising from the ashes is a recurring motif, symbolizing the speaker's repeated resurrections and her defiance of death. The language of the poem is intense and evocative, with sharp contrasts between beauty and horror. Plath's use of dark humor and irony adds depth to the speaker's complex emotions, allowing her to mock her own suffering while also expressing genuine pain. Plath uses striking and often grotesque imagery to convey the speaker's experiences of death and rebirth. For example, the speaker compares herself to a walking miracle and describes her body as being burned alive. 
The imagery creates a visceral impact on the reader and emphasizes the intensity of the speaker's emotions. The poem is laced with irony and dark humor, as the speaker mocks her own suffering and the fascination it elicits from her audience. This tone adds complexity to the poem and highlights the speaker's defiance. In addition to the biblical reference in the title, Plath incorporates other mythological elements, such as the phoenix rising from the ashes, to symbolize the speaker's repeated resurrections. These references add depth and resonance to the poem, connecting the speaker's experiences to broader themes of transformation and renewal. Plath uses repetition of phrases and imagery to emphasize the speaker's cycle of death and rebirth, creating a sense of inevitability and entrapment. The structured form of the poem, with its tight tersets, contrasts with the chaotic and disturbing content, reflecting the speaker's struggle for control over her own narrative. Sylvia Plath's poem, Lady Lazarus, can be analyzed in the context of the social and political landscape of the time it was written, as well as the personal circumstances of Plath's life. Additionally, Plath's use of language in the poem is integral to its impact and meaning. Lady Lazarus, was written in the early 1960s, a period when the feminist movement was gaining momentum and challenging traditional gender roles. Plath's poem can be seen as a critique of the limited roles and expectations imposed on women at the time. The poem's speaker grapples with issues of autonomy and self-determination, confronting societal pressures and the commodification of her identity. During Plath's time, mental health issues were often stigmatized, and there was limited understanding or support for individuals experiencing depression or other mental health challenges. The poem can be interpreted as reflecting Plath's own struggles with mental health and her feelings of isolation and alienation. The poem critiques the way society consumes and exploits personal suffering, turning it into a spectacle or entertainment. This is evident in the speaker's disdain for the peanut-crunching crowd that takes a voyeuristic interest in her suffering. Lady Lazarus, is a powerful and unsettling poem that delves into themes of death, rebirth, and identity with unflinching honesty. Plath's masterful use of imagery, language, and form creates a haunting portrayal of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the expectations of those around her. The poem's exploration of self-destruction as a form of artistic expression and defiance remains a poignant and thought-provoking reflection on the human condition. Lady Lazarus, is a powerful and intense poem that explores themes of identity, death, rebirth, and the relationship between the self and society. Plath's use of vivid imagery, Irony, and dark humor creates a haunting and memorable portrayal of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the expectations placed on her. The poem's social and political context, as well as its language and structure, contribute to its depth and impact. Themes Lady Lazarus, by Sylvia Plath explores several profound and complex themes, including death and rebirth, the commodification of suffering, identity and autonomy, self-destruction and artistic expression, as well as anger and defiance. Below is a detailed analysis of each theme and how it manifests within the poem. Death and rebirth. The poem revolves around the speaker's repeated experiences of death and rebirth, which she endures every decade. The speaker treats these episodes as performances, highlighting the cyclical nature of her existence. 
The biblical reference to Lazarus being raised from the dead suggests a theme of miraculous resurrection, but the speaker's repeated deaths and resurrections have a darker, more personal, and potentially suicidal connotation. Commodification of suffering. The speaker refers to her body and experiences as a strip tease and peanut crunching crowd. This suggests that her suffering is being consumed as a form of entertainment by the public, turning her pain into a spectacle. The poem explores how various figures, including doctors and the audience, benefit from the speaker's suffering, reducing her to a commodity that can be used for their gain. Identity and Autonomy The speaker asserts her agency and control over her own life and death, emphasizing her ability to choose when she will die and rise again. The speaker presents her experiences as a kind of performance art, Framing her identity as something she shapes and controls in response to her audience's expectations. Self-destruction and artistic expression. The speaker sees her repeated deaths as a form of artistic expression, allowing her to transform herself through suffering and resurrection. The speaker's embrace of her own self-destruction can be interpreted as a means of asserting control and autonomy over her own body and life. Anger and defiance. The speaker expresses anger and disdain for those who exploit and judge her suffering, referring to them as a peanut-crunching crowd. The speaker's tone is confrontational and rebellious asserting her intent to rise stronger and more defiant each time she is reborn. Lady Lazarus is a powerful exploration of complex themes related to death and rebirth, the commodification of suffering, and the struggle for autonomy and identity. Plath uses vivid imagery, dark humor, and intense language to convey the speaker's experiences and emotions. The poem presents a haunting portrayal of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the expectations of society, while asserting her own agency and defiance in the face of exploitation and suffering. Symbols. Sylvia Plath's poem, Lady Lazarus, is rich in symbolism, which enhances its themes and deepens the impact of its vivid and haunting language. The symbols in the poem reflect the speaker's experiences of death and rebirth, her relationship with the audience, and her struggle for autonomy and control. Here is a detailed analysis of the major symbols in the poem. Lazarus, the title of the poem refers to the biblical figure Lazarus, who was raised from the dead by Jesus. This illusion sets the stage for the theme of resurrection and repeated cycles of death and rebirth. By referring to herself as Lady Lazarus, the speaker casts herself as a female version of Lazarus, emphasizing her own unique experience of repeated resurrections. Phoenix. The phoenix is a mythological bird that rises from its ashes symbolizing rebirth and renewal. The speaker likens herself to a phoenix, highlighting her ability to rise again stronger each time she is reborn. The phoenix symbolizes transformation and the speaker's journey through cycles of destruction and renewal. Peanut crunching crowd. The phrase refers to the audience that watches the speaker's suffering with voyeuristic interest turning her pain into a form of entertainment or spectacle. The imagery of the crowd munching on peanuts while watching the speaker underscores their detachment from her suffering and their lack of empathy. Strip tease. The speaker's description of her body as a strip tease emphasizes her perception of being objectified and exploited for the amusement of others. 
The striptease metaphor also reflects the speaker's view of her experiences as performances for an audience, highlighting the commodification of her suffering. Jewish identity and persecution. The speaker uses references such as ash, ash, and mentions of being compared to a concentration camp victim to evoke images of persecution and suffering. These references can be interpreted as symbols of survival and resilience in the face of extreme adversity. The Resurrection Box The speaker describes her experiences as being placed in a box for each death. This symbolizes the literal and metaphorical confines of death and her eventual emergence and resurrection. The imagery of the box also conveys the speaker's escape from death and confinement. Gold. The speaker refers to herself as a pure gold baby and valuable, emphasizing the value and preciousness of her experiences, as well as her own sense of self-worth. The reference to gold also highlights the speaker's commodification by others as gold is a valuable resource that can be exploited. The symbols in Lady Lazarus serve to enhance the poem's themes and convey the speaker's complex emotions and experiences. The use of biblical and mythological allusions, along with imagery related to suffering and commodification, creates a haunting portrayal of the speaker's journey through death and rebirth. The poem's symbols deepen the reader's understanding of the speaker's struggle for autonomy, control, and resilience in the face of exploitation and voyeurism. Important question and answer. Q. 1. Should Sylvia Plath be considered a confessional poet, or does her work challenge that designation? Ans. Sylvia Plath is often regarded as one of the most prominent figures in the confessional poetry movement. Confessional poetry is a style of poetry that emerged in the mid-20th century, characterized by its personal and autobiographical content. Poets such as Robert Lowell, Anne Sexton, and Plath are commonly associated with this movement. Plath's poetry often draws heavily from her own life experiences, including her struggles with mental illness, relationships, and personal challenges. Her work frequently delves into deeply personal and intimate aspects of her life. Her poetry is marked by raw emotional intensity and vulnerability, characteristics of confessional poetry. Plath does not shy away from exploring her deepest fears, desires, and traumas. Plath's work explores themes central to confessional poetry, such as the complexities of her identity, experiences with depression and suicide, and her relationship with death. Plath's use of striking and often disturbing imagery, metaphors, and symbols to describe her internal struggles as a hallmark of confessional poetry. Plath's legacy is closely tied to the confessional movement, and her work continues to be celebrated for its emotional depth and bold exploration of personal subjects. While Plath's poetry is often intensely personal, she frequently uses mythological and literary allusions to provide a broader context and depth to her work. This literary complexity extends beyond the traditional scope of confessional poetry. Plath's work sometimes goes beyond the purely confessional, engaging with themes such as identity, feminism, societal expectations, and artistic expression. This broader perspective challenges the notion of Plath's work being solely confessional. Plath's poetry is not just confessional in content but also experimental in form and structure, 
incorporating innovative poetic techniques and devices that may not always align with the traditional style of confessional poetry. While Sylvia Plath is commonly associated with the confessional poetry movement due to her deeply personal and autobiographical writing, her work also challenges the confines of this label. Her use of mythological and literary allusions, as well as her engagement with broader themes and innovative poetic techniques, contribute to the richness and complexity of her poetry. Plath's work is ultimately a unique and multifaceted exploration of the human condition that transcends a single label. Q. 2. How does the concept of purity manifest in Plath's poetry? Ans. The concept of purity in Sylvia Plath's poetry manifests in complex and multifaceted ways, often intertwined with themes of identity, death, and the search for self-actualization. Plath's exploration of purity is not straightforward. Instead, it is complicated by her intense emotional experiences, her struggles with mental health, and her questioning of societal expectations. Purity is innocence and vulnerability. Plath's poetry sometimes reflects on childhood and moments of innocence, portraying purity as a state of vulnerability and openness to experience. For instance, in poems like Your, Plath expresses the joy and innocence of new life, capturing the purity of her unborn child. This innocence is often juxtaposed with the complexities and challenges of adult life, suggesting a loss of purity as one ages and faces the harsh realities of the world. Purity and death. In some poems, purity is associated with death and the idea of release from the struggles and imperfections of life. Death is seen as a state of final purity, free from the suffering and pain that characterize existence. In Lady Lazarus, for example, the speaker's repeated cycles of death and resurrection can be seen as an attempt to achieve a form of purity through self-destruction and rebirth. Purity and Perfectionism Plath's pursuit of purity can be linked to her struggles with perfectionism and the desire to achieve an idealized state. This pursuit is often fraught with tension and frustration, as it can lead to self-destructive behaviors and mental anguish. In Mirror, Plath explores the theme of self-perception and the longing for purity and perfection in one's appearance, revealing the speaker's dissatisfaction with her reflection and her fear of aging. Purity and self-transformation. Purity in Plath's poetry can also be associated with self-transformation and renewal. In poems such as, Ariel, the speaker experiences a sense of liberation and purity as she transcends her earthly existence and undergoes a spiritual transformation. This type of purity is linked to the speaker's ability to shed her previous self and emerge anew, often in a state of clarity and power. Purity and Isolation Plath's quest for purity can lead to a sense of isolation and alienation, as she grapples with her own internal struggles and the pressures of societal expectations. In The Bell Jar, her semi-autobiographical novel, Plath portrays the protagonist's sense of isolation and detachment from the world as she seeks purity and authenticity in her life. Sylvia Plath's exploration of purity is nuanced and multifaceted, often intertwined with themes of innocence, death, self-transformation, and perfectionism. While purity can offer moments of clarity and renewal, it can also lead to feelings of isolation and dissatisfaction. 
Platt's poetry delves deep into these complexities, reflecting her own struggles with identity and the human condition. Q. 3. What do metaphors and child suggest about Platt's view on pregnancy and motherhood? Anne's Sylvia Plath's poems, Metaphors, and Child, both offer insight into her complex and nuanced views on pregnancy and motherhood. These poems explore her experiences and emotions surrounding pregnancy and motherhood, conveying both the joy and the challenges of these stages in her life. Metaphors is a poem that uses a series of vivid and often startling images to describe the experience of being pregnant. The poem consists of nine lines, representing the nine months of pregnancy, and each line is a metaphor for the speaker's pregnant body. The poem's images capture the dual nature of pregnancy, with references to both the marvel of creation and the strange, even grotesque aspects of carrying a child. For example, the speaker compares herself to a melon strolling on two tendrils, and a house in a house, conveying both the surreal and the cumbersome aspects of pregnancy. The poem highlights the speaker's sense of losing her individuality and autonomy as her body undergoes changes to accommodate the growing life inside her. This loss of identity may be unsettling for Plath, who values her sense of self and independence. Metaphors, reflects Plath's complex emotions about pregnancy. While there is an acknowledgement of the wondrous and transformative nature of pregnancy, there is also a sense of alienation and estrangement from her own body. Child, as a poem that reflects Plath's deep love and concern for her child, as well as her worries about being an adequate mother. The poem presents an idealized vision of her child, describing them as a clear eye, and a being of innocence and purity. Plath's deep affection and desire to protect her child are evident in her language. While the poem expresses Plath's hopes for her child's future, it also reveals her anxieties about her own ability to be a good mother. She worries that her child may experience the same difficulties she has faced. Plath contrasts the purity and potential she sees in her child with her own emotional struggles and imperfections. This contrast highlights her concern about the influence she may have on her child. Both, metaphors, and, child, reveal Plath's complex and often ambivalent feelings about pregnancy and motherhood. While she clearly experiences moments of wonder and deep love, she also grapples with feelings of alienation, anxiety, and self-doubt. These poems illustrate the multifaceted nature of Plath's experience as a mother and her ongoing struggle to reconcile her role as a parent with her own personal challenges. Q. 4. Who is Lazarus and what parallels does Plath draw in, Lady Lazarus? Anne's. Lazarus is a biblical figure who appears in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, specifically in the Gospel of John. Lazarus of Bethany is known for being raised from the dead by Jesus after having been dead for four days. The story of Lazarus's resurrection is one of the most well-known miracles performed by Jesus and symbolizes triumph over death and the promise of eternal life. In Sylvia Plath's poem, Lady Lazarus, Plath draws parallels between her speaker and the biblical figure of Lazarus, using his story as a metaphor for her own experiences with repeated cycles of death and resurrection. The speaker of the poem, like Lazarus, experiences cycles of death and resurrection. 
She mentions that she has gone through this process multiple times, much like Lazarus's miraculous return to life. However, unlike Lazarus's experience, which is portrayed as a one-time event, the speaker's repeated confrontations with death suggest a recurring and haunting cycle. The biblical Lazarus's resurrection was considered a miraculous event, attracting attention and awe from those who witnessed it. Similarly, the speaker in the poem views her own resurrections as a form of spectacle and performance for an audience. The speaker presents herself as a walking miracle, highlighting the strange and surreal nature of her experiences with death and rebirth. In the biblical story, Lazarus's resurrection is an act performed by Jesus, suggesting a lack of agency on Lazarus's part. In contrast, the speaker of Lady Lazarus asserts her own control and agency over her death and resurrection. The speaker's defiant attitude and sense of ownership over her life and death challenge the traditional view of resurrection as a divine act. The poem's speaker expresses resentment toward the audience that consumes her suffering as a form of entertainment. This parallels the attention that Lazarus's resurrection garnered, but the speaker's reaction is one of anger and defiance. She feels exploited by the crowd, viewing her resurrections as a spectacle for their amusement. In Lady Lazarus, Plath uses the story of Lazarus as a powerful metaphor for the speaker's own experiences with death, rebirth, and the commodification of suffering. By drawing parallels between her speaker and the biblical figure of Lazarus, Plath explores themes of autonomy, agency, and defiance in the face of exploitation and the cyclical nature of death and resurrection. The poem presents a haunting and complex portrayal of a woman grappling with her own mortality and the expectations placed upon her. Q. 5. Why does Sylvia Plath use tersets in, Lady Lazarus? Anne's Sylvia Plath's decision to use tersets stands as consisting of three lines each. In her poem, Lady Lazarus serves multiple purposes and contributes to the overall impact and structure of the poem. Tersets create a distinctive rhythm and structure within the poem. The short, three line stanzas can create a sense of intensity and urgency propelling the poem forward with a brisk pace. The repetition of the tercet form creates a rhythmic pattern that mirrors the cyclical nature of the speaker's experiences with death and rebirth. The tercets allow Plath to juxtapose contrasting ideas and images within a compact space. This structure enhances the tension and complexity of the poem, as the speaker navigates between themes such as life and death, control and helplessness, and strength and vulnerability. The three-line stanzas also allow for sharp shifts in tone and subject matter, creating a sense of disorientation and unpredictability that mirrors the speaker's experiences. The brevity of the tercet form focuses the reader's attention on each stanza, making each line's impact more immediate and powerful. The three-line stanzas can emphasize key phrases and images, allowing Plath to highlight the most significant aspects of the speaker's narrative. The tercet form creates a visual structure on the page that is distinctive and memorable. This form can add a sense of fragmentation and disruption, echoing the speaker's experience of being torn apart and reassembled through cycles of death and resurrection. The use of tercets can also contribute to the poem's auditory qualities, such as rhyme, assonance, and consonance, which enhance the musicality and impact of the poem.
The number three holds symbolic significance in various cultures and contexts. It may symbolize cycles, such as birth, life, and death, or creation, destruction, and rebirth. Plath's use of tercets can be seen as an acknowledgement of these cycles and the speaker's repeated confrontations with death and resurrection. Plath's use of tercets in Lady Lazarus serves to enhance the poem's structure, rhythm, and impact. The form allows her to create sharp contrasts, focus the reader's attention, and convey the cyclical and unpredictable nature of the speaker's experiences. The use of tercets also contributes to the visual and auditory effects of the poem, making Lady Lazarus a powerful and memorable work. Q. 6. In Lady Lazarus, does Plath portray adoration towards a fascistic male? Ans. In Sylvia Plath's poem, Lady Lazarus, the speaker does not express adoration towards a fascistic male figure. Instead, the poem portrays a complex and defiant attitude towards such a figure, reflecting the speaker's anger, resistance, and contempt. The poem mentions Herr Doktor and Herr God, alluding to figures of authority such as doctors and divine powers. The use of Herr, a German honorific associated with formal address and, in this context, fascistic connotations creates a link to figures of power and control. The speaker describes how these male figures exploit her suffering and commodify her experiences. She refers to being examined and used as an object or specimen, which can be interpreted as a critique of the dehumanizing and exploitative tendencies of those in power. The speaker's tone is not one of adoration but rather of anger and defiance. She resents the ways in which these male figures exert control over her life and death, and she challenges their authority. Throughout the poem, the speaker asserts her agency and control over her own life and death, emphasizing her ability to choose when she will die and rise again. This defiance contrasts with any notion of adoration towards the male figures of power. The speaker adopts a mocking and confrontational tone towards the male figures, referring to them with disdain and challenging their authority. Her attitude is one of resistance rather than submission or admiration. The poem makes subtle references to the Holocaust and the horrors of World War II, such as the image of, Ash, Ash. These allusions emphasize the atrocities committed by fascistic regimes and the impact on human lives. Plath's critique of power dynamics extends to the ways in which male figures, such as doctors or authority figures, exploit and control vulnerable individuals, including women. In Lady Lazarus, Plath does not portray adoration towards a fascistic male figure. Instead, the poem presents a speaker who defies and resists the control and exploitation exerted by male figures of authority. The speaker's anger and defiance reflect a rejection of the dehumanizing and commodifying tendencies associated with fascistic power, rather than an embrace of it. Q. 7. What is the interplay between life and death in, Lady Lazarus? Ans. In Sylvia Plath's poem, Lady Lazarus, the interplay between life and death is central to the narrative and themes of the poem. Plath explores the cyclical nature of life and death, Presenting a complex relationship between the two as the speaker experiences repeated cycles of death and resurrection. 
The speaker experiences multiple cycles of death and resurrection, treating each as a form of performance or spectacle. This cyclical pattern creates a rhythm of destruction and renewal that defines her existence. Each time the speaker dies and is reborn, she emerges with a sense of power and agency, emphasizing her control over her own fate. Death is presented as a form of transformation for the speaker. Through each death, she sheds her old self and is reborn stronger and more defiant. This renewal is reminiscent of the mythological phoenix rising from its ashes, symbolizing resilience and the ability to overcome adversity. The poem portrays a tension between life and death, as the speaker grapples with her mortality and the pressures of being a spectacle for an audience. The speaker's defiance in the face of death reflects her refusal to be controlled or exploited by those who seek to profit from her suffering. The speaker treats her experiences of death and resurrection as performances for an audience, emphasizing the theatrical and performative aspects of her life and death. She presents herself as a walking miracle, highlighting the surreal and dramatic nature of her repeated resurrections. Despite the harrowing experiences of death and resurrection, the speaker asserts her autonomy and control over her life and death. She chooses when to die and when to rise again, emphasizing her independence from external forces. Plath uses dark humor and irony to navigate the interplay between life and death, mocking her own experiences and the voyeuristic interest of her audience. This use of humor adds a layer of complexity to the poem, highlighting the speaker's resilience and strength in the face of death. In Lady Lazarus Sylvia Plath explores the interplay between life and death through the speaker's repeated cycles of death and resurrection. The poem presents a complex and multifaceted relationship between the two, characterized by transformation, defiance, autonomy, and dark humor. Plath's portrayal of this interplay challenges traditional notions of life and death, emphasizing the speaker's resilience and agency in the face of exploitation and suffering.